This clip looks at the Donegal Dentist database and attempts to build relationships between the tables. So the in the previous clip, we looked at the um, the data in each table and I changed some of the values for the pa patient ID column in the patient table and then noticed that the corresponding rows in the appointment table now don't have matching um, parent records. So the trouble here is the the changes I've made in the patient table and the appointment table to the to the values in the patient ID column throws my database out of sync. It means that there are some rows in the appointment table that don't have a matching parent row in the parent or patient table in this case. And that's the that's troublesome. So we're going to close the two tables and now look at how you can set up or how you can attempt to set up relationships between the tables. So when you go into this relationships uh, option, I'll just close it again and start it. So under my under my database tools um, section, I've got the facility here to create relationships. So if I go to database tools, this relationships button is activated. So when I click on that, access knows that I want to include some of the tables. So it offers me a list of all my table names. It also offers me any queries I've built already, if I have done so, are both tables and relation and queries. So all I'm interested in is the tables and the relationships between between them. So what I can do is I can add the tables one at a time to the grid, or I can uh, add a, a lot of them together. So it's handier actually put put the whole lot of them on the on the grids together, and then uh, establish the relationships. So I highlight them all and choose the add button. And what access does it throws them here on a line across the screen, and um, the tables are just simply listed in the same order as they are in the uh, the view here on my left hand side on the where I look at the objects. The first thing I'm going to do is stretch out each table so I can see its full list of column names. So I don't want to have be scrolling like this. So the best thing to do is stretch them out because you'll need to see all of the columns uh, at some point. So you will. That's our first task. So the next job is to try and put the tables in some kind of order. So if I think there's a relationship between say appointment and clinic, it's not the fact that these two tables are beside each other, that's convenient. But there's also an, a relationship between dentist and appointment. And there's a relationship between appointment and patient as well. So ideally we'll keep those tables close to each other. So what it looks like is, because I, what I want to avoid doing is ending up, say, dragging the, the prime, what will be the primary key of the patient table, PAT ID, over to its matching uh, PAT ID column in the appointment table. And then ending up with a link that runs across the entire screen. Okay, it makes far more sense if I could place those two tables near each other and move the other tables out of the way. So, the, the idea here is to put tables close to or adjacent to the other tables that they're related to. So in our um, review of the tables in, 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 in the past, we're aware that the appointment table is linked to the patient table, it's linked to the dentist table, and it's linked to the clinic table. So there are the three we'll concern ourselves with for the moment. Uh, the appointment, the, the patient, and the dentist. So. What you have to look at really is what other tables are, are, are the, these three tables or four tables related to as well. So we know that a patient is linked to employer or employed by, sorry. Um, so placing it beside the, the, the employed by table will be helpful. Clinic isn't linked to anything else. So we can probably safely put clinic over here on the, um, on the left hand side for the moment and put appointment maybe somewhere down from it. And then the, the ones that are of, of biggest concern are dentist and patient. So dentist is linked to university. So we might you move uh, dentist over here to the left. Dentist over to the left and put university just above it somewhere. Okay, so as you'll see in a few minutes, what we're trying to do here is having lines crossing over each other and confusing people. 
So what I've done, as I said, I've looked at building a little relationship between appointment and patient. But I'm going to delete that relationship in, in, now, so I am. And uh, look at it again in a minute. Okay, so here's appointment and here's patient. So I think that kind of layout will work for those few tables. And then I'll put dentist training down here below dentist and employer and employed by over here near um, patient. So that hopefully will give us a chance to uh, build the relationships. So the one I was exploring earlier on was the relationship between a patient and an appointment. When I was looking at the data and the tables a little bit earlier on. So if you remember, one more time, I looked at uh, the patient table and I changed some of the patient's numbers. I changed Paul Kelly's number, I changed Laura Rush's number. And that, as I explained, is troublesome. Likewise, went into the appointment table and I changed some of the values here on the appointment table. So now we have uh, appointments we can't trace. In other words, we have appointment here for 206 and we have no matching cost, we have no matching patient. Same with 203, no matching patient. And then we have appointments for patient 101. And look, again, looking at the patient table, there's no patient 101 because we happen to number renumber Laura Rush as, as 201. So these uh, changes we made earlier on are now going to come back to haunt us. So I'm going to close the appointment table, close the uh, patient table as well, and look and stay back in the relationships. So the integrity problems or the accuracy problems I've described uh, just now and in an earlier clip are now going to surface for real and cause us more trouble than we want. So I'm now going to again look at the relationship between a patient and an appointment. And the relationship is that a patient may have zero or more appointments. Okay, so some patients on our system have had no appointments yet. Some patients have had maybe just one appointment, but all patients potentially could have many appointments. So when you're building the relationship between those two tables, you need to be aware of the one to many relationship. In other words, what table is the parent and what table is the child in this particular relationship? So if we say a patient may have zero or more appointments, we can conclude that a patient is the is the parent side and appointment is the child side of this relationship. And the way you set up the relationship in access, there's still no relationships, okay? So we all we've done is put the tables on this little greater workspace where we can now create the relationships. So this is the most important phase of all in the entire task so far. So we're now going to, to build this relationship by taking the, the primary key column, or what will be the primary key column in the patient table, and dragging it to the matching column in the appointment table. And what you'll notice is that the on the left hand side here you see a reference to patient and to pat id that looks good and on the right hand side you see the related table or query is the appointment table and pat id is the intended matching column so both of those match up and all is fine if you happen to choose the wrong column you can just change it here if that was the case so if f name was the primary key column then we could just switch it and the same over here with the um in the child table so to as things stand, if we create this relationship, it's a very weak relationship, okay? Because we can still go in and start renumbering patients, okay? So if I open the patient table again, and I want to now call um, Paul Kelly patient 300, I can. Or if I want to call Laura Rush or give her the number 300 and one, I can do that as well. And access doesn't complain. So this is a very weak version of the relationship. So I'm now going to, uh, I can either delete it again if I wish, or I can float over it with my, my mouse and right click on it and edit the relationship. So I can either delete it or I can edit it. So I'm going to choose the edit option in this case. So it's the, it's the correct two tables. It's the correct two columns. And now this is where the powerful stuff starts. This option to enforce referential integrity. And what this will do is it'll stop me carrying out the mischief I did earlier on when I um, renumbered some of the patients or, and also renumbered their ID numbers and also renumbered some of the uh, appointments where I changed the, the patient, detail, patient ID number as well. The trouble is that when I press the OK button to build this relationship, access uh, complains on a number of levels. The first thing it says is there's no unique index found for referenced fields in the primary table. So what that's telling me in simple terms or in more in wordy terms, is it's telling me basically that I have no primary key set up in the patient table. So that's the first uh, source of trouble. So it won't let me 
uh, kind of um, elaborate or build the more um, important aspects of this relationship. So I can still leave the weak relationship in place by just pressing OK. Um, and then what I've got to do is go back to the the, the appointment, the patient table, sorry, and uh, designate the PAT ID as the primary key. And then rebuild the relationship. So I'm going to go back to my patient table, looking at, look at design view. And again, you notice here there's no key symbol beside the PAT ID. So therefore, I know there's no primary key set up. So I, to overcome that problem, I just hit the, I highlight the column, PAT ID column, and go up to the primary key symbol here in the toolbar and click on primary key. And uh, the settings I'm most interested perhaps here at the minute are that, that, that's an integer. Um, that'll be important in a few minutes time and that there is no duplicates, that it doesn't allow duplicates. It's indexed. So I'll save that. I'll close the table and save it. And I'll now go back in again. And this time I'll actually delete the relationship just, just to start from scratch. I could edit it, but I'll delete it just to, to begin again. So I'm going to, now you can see the key symbol here appearing on the patient, um, beside the patient ID column or path ID column in the patient table. So it's looking better. So the patient may have many appointments, as we said, and therefore to try and build that, I'm going to drag it again like I did earlier and uh, plant it on top of the matching column in the appointment table. So the two columns are fine, the two tables are fine, and I now hit the Enforce Integrity button. And now I can hit the Create Relationship option. And again, I'm going to run into trouble. Okay, so the next source of trouble is it says, this relationship must be on the same number of fields with the same data types. So now there's an issue with the data types. Um, so we'll okay that and accept that that's the case. And we'll abandon that relationship for the minute. So just hit cancel. And now we go back again and have a closer look at the two tables. So if we open the, tape, the patient table in design view, we see that PAT ID is a number and that it's an integer. And likewise, when we look at the appointment table in design view, and again, the column we're interested in is PAT ID. It's a number. But the trouble is that when I import the data, I didn't change it from double to integer. And that's why the previous uh, bit of trouble is breaking out. The PAT ID, the, the field size in the two tables needs to match. So it's not just enough that they're both number. That in this case, they both must match in the field size as well. So if you look at the two tables quickly, PAT ID in the patient table is number and integer. And PAT ID in the appointment table is now number and integer as well. So it's time now to save the two tables to make sure that's um, established. So again, it's warning me that I've changed the field and made it shorter. So that would be of concern if I had very big long numbers, but I don't. So I'm going to say I'm happy with that. And I'll do this, I'll close the patient table as well. I will now go back and try and build the relationship for the third time, I think it is. At least the third time. So we drag and pat ID from the parent, the patient table, to the appointment table, the child. And again, the matches are fine up here. And we enforce integrity. And again, we're going to run into even more trouble. So the, the trouble this time is that it says the ac access cannot create this link or relationship and enforce referential integrity. So now this is where the um, my changing of the ID numbers, my changing of patient ID numbers in the patient table and likewise in the appointment table is coming back to haunt me. So it says data in the, in the table appointment violates the integrity rules. In other words, there are child rows in the appointment table that don't have matching parents, okay? So it says, for example, there may be records relating to an employee in, in a related table, but no employee in the in the primary table. So in the employee in the employee case here, we'll substitute in the appointment table. So there's something in the appointment table that doesn't have matching data in the um, patient table. So access, in other words, won't allow me to build a rule provided there is, or as long as there is data in the two tables that break the rule I'm trying to create. Okay, so, so I have to abandon this relationship again. And I now have to go back and try and remember what changes I made that were inappropriate. So in my um, patient table, the changes I definitely made that are, are illegal, whereas I went and took Paul Kelly's number and met him from 100 to 300, so I'll switch that back. Laura Rush likewise went from uh, 101 to 301. That now hopefully is our patient table fixed. So I'll save that. 
And then I go to my appointment table. And when I open the appointment table, I have uh, all the 100s are safe at this stage. The 100 down here to 106 is fine. But the 103 and the 206 need to be re, um, reassigned as 103 and 106. So at this stage, if you can recall it very briefly, that every appointment now in the appointment table matches, every, every PAT ID in the appointment table matches the PAT ID value of some patient in the patient table. So we're back to where we were before we started. So again, I'll close the appointment table. And now go back for the last time, hopefully, to try and build this relationship. So again, I drag from the parent to the child. When I do that, the two tables, check the two tables and check the two columns. And lastly, try to enforce integrity and try to create the relationship. And this time it works. Okay, so that's how to. So now what I'll do to quickly demonstrate how that works is I'm going to go into the patient table. and I'm going to try and change Paul Kelly's number from 100 to 200. And I'm going to try and click away from him. So when I click away from Paul Kelly down, we'll say to Jim Killeen, access starts to complain. Okay, this record cannot be deleted or changed because the table appointment uh, includes related records. So that's why I cannot modify Paul Kelly's record from his patient ID value from 100 to 200. Okay, I could change his name. I could change his address if I wished, but they won't affect the, um, so I'll just, Okay, so that shouldn't be complaining, so it shouldn't. Um, so I'll just save it now and close it. Okay, it's complaining here, and that shouldn't be the case, so it shouldn't. Okay, so I'll close it, and it should be fine. Okay, so I'll open the patient table again. Paul Kelly is fine. In the appointment table, Paul Kelly's rows are still there. So ignore that last little warning. It didn't do any damage of any consequence. So that's the end of the clip.